Uh, I have one uh, for you today that deals with what we call the generalized arithmetic mean, geometric mean inequality. Now, um, we're, we're trying to prove this, but I want to go over what this really means and maybe work one special case before we actually get into the proof of this. Now, again, this is called the arithmetic mean right here, this left-hand side. And it's a summation. Uh, the most common case is when n is equal to 2, and it's just called the average. But this is called the arithmetic mean. And uh, this is called the geometric mean, and it's with respect to multiplication. It's, it actually is an uh, inequality that relates uh, multiplication and uh, addition. It's a big deal because it, it's, a, it's a way to re really relate the sum and the product of, of, the, of the same variables. Now, the special case for when uh, for x and y, this would just reduce to you know n equals to two. Okay, n equals two. If we do n equals two, and we use x and y in lieu of the subscripted variables, we would end up with x plus y uh, over two. This is called the arithmetic mean, the most common form that you'll run across usually. And then here's where it becomes a multiplication. This is greater than or equal to, sorry, greater than or equal to the square root of x, y. Now, uh, one of the things that creates a lot of confusion when you're teaching college algebra, there's an understood index of two right there, right? A lot of times that gets left out. That's called the index of the radical. But anyway, these twos and these twos line up. It's the index of a radical here. Here it's just a, a, a denominator. Now let's work, let's work just a concrete case so you'll trust it even more. We're going to prove this in general, but let's just check some numbers out. So if we take A1 equal A2 equals A3 equals 4, we would end up with 1. And I just picked 4 arbitrarily, folks. You could pick any, anything. This is just for computational ease. But 1 fourth plus 1 fourth plus 1 fourth is, is uh, 3 over 4. Write that down. Okay. So again, y'all, this is the n equals three case. N equals three case. Now, uh, according to this result, we which we have yet to prove, this would be uh, four plus four plus four over here. Of course, that's equal to twelve. All right, but notice this would be equal to 12 times 3 fourths. So let's just write that down. Uh, that's equal to uh, 3 over 4 on the left, left hand side there. 3 over 4 is what you get when you sum up 1 fourth plus 1 fourth plus 1 fourth, and this will be times 12. And notice we see, let me write it above here. That's equal to uh, 12 over 4. That's equal to 9, right? Uh, so that, but that's that's equal to 3 squared also, right? And really, this should, uh, I should be writing greater than or equal to right here. Sorry, I keep making that mistake. That should be uh, greater than or equal to right there. And uh, so, again, the, the case was 3. So uh, this all works out, doesn't it? 12 over 4 is 3. 3 times 3 is the 9 that you see right here. And that, 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 that works in, the, in this connection right here. Okay. So we've proved that equality appears to hold just if all three of the values are equal to each other. Okay. Now, uh, let me clear this out. And again, folks, we are trying to prove this. I need to go to the next screen. I need to go to the next screen. But we are trying to prove this result that says the sum of the reciprocals times all the numbers added together uh, is always going to be greater than or equal to n squared if it's a list of n numbers. Okay. All right. So let's move along uh, here to the next screen. All right. Now, um, this is fairly natural here. Uh, it, it works out pretty, pretty nicely. What I did is I applied the AMGM twice. Notice here I divided the reciprocals by N, and down here I, re I divided the numbers. After all, that's what we're trying to prove. Uh, this 
times this meets some condition is what we're trying to prove. So I applied the arithmetic mean, geometric mean on this line and on this line. Okay, and it's all very, very direct. I, I, I'm not going to say too much here. Notice how the, the addition result becomes a multiplication result, but we're extracting the nth root. Here we're dividing by n. Here we're extracting the nth root. And um, so we end up with this part right here. We end up with this piece right here, which is just the, the left-hand part of what we're trying to prove is greater than or equal to this. And in a very similar fashion, we get that the sum of the of the non-reciprocals or the or the real of the numbers is in times that. But you can see when we multiply the green the green inequalities. Okay, here's the top green inequality. Here's the bottom green inequality. When we multiply them together, you can multiply inequalities together just like you can multiply equalities together. Notice that all of this stuff just cancels, right? You have the nth root of the product of these numbers over the nth root of the reciprocal of all those numbers as a, as a single term, okay? And so that cancels out nicely by the properties of radicals. All right, so all that's left is this n times this n right here. You see this n here. Now, y'all, this is a little confusing. This n is the index of the radical. This means n, I probably should put that in parentheses maybe. This means m times this radical. This means n times this radical. But when you multiply them together, this radic, this, uh, radicand, I guess you want to call it, is the reciprocal of this rad radicand, and so that gives you one. So that's why you get n squared right here, okay? And that's the proof. That is the proof, ladies and gentlemen. Remember, that is what, I'll, I'll go back to the, we were trying to prove this result right here, right? Okay? And we managed to do that fairly convincingly here by applying the AMGM inequality twice and then multiplying the ensuing inequalities. And we got a nice cancellation with the two radicands here. All right, now a kind of a special case or whatever you wanna call it. If you wanna say that these, and these I think are taken to be positive numbers, I'm pretty sure that's important, although I'm not 100% sure I think, I think that's important. But uh, A1 plus A2 plus AN, if we give it a name, call it M, we see that this result, if you replace this with M, if you replace this piece right here with M, Okay, uh, in other words, let me just go ahead. If we give it a name, okay, if, if we call this parenthetical piece M, right? Okay, this entire parenthetical glob of stuff here, that sum, if we call it M and divide through by M, we get this result, which is another formulation I think that computer scientists use. There was a guy on, on uh, math exchange who, who needed to know something about this, and he tested it like 10 to the seventh times and saw that this was the bound empirically without understanding it theoretically. So maybe he'll read this. But anyway, y'all, let me know what you think. I thought it was pretty cool how we used AMGM twice. We used basic properties of inequalities. And we made a nice little substitution here at the end to get a more perhaps presentable formula.